The NBA Finals matchup is set. The NBA offseason is almost in full swing, and it is about time for the Sixers to get busy, start wheeling and dealing, and building out this roster. Well, Bleacher Report returned with some speculation and reports of some possible trades that may go down and link to the Sixers for something a little bit outside of the box or one of the lesser-known names that we know to this point. I want to dive into what that trade is, whether or not I think it makes sense for the Sixers, and kind of talk about the big p- picture of this offseason, why that the Sixers are essentially stuck at this point in time. So I'm going to lead off with this trade right here from Bleacher Report. This is coming from Zach Buckley here, and he projects that the Sixers trade the number 16th overall pick to the Golden State Warriors in exchange for Moses Moody. In his reasoning, he writes that, quote, while the Sixers have enough trade chips to take a bigger swing than Moody, their preferred path to a massive upgrade or two is almost certainly in free agency. They can open up nearly $65 million in cap space this summer, meaning they could splurge on a household name or two without dipping to their trade asset collection. With Philly carrying championship expectations into the 24-25 campaign, it may not want to withstand any growing pains that the 16th overall pick would almost certainly have. The Sixers could have an easier time seeing Moody stepping into a 3 and D role on opening night while also hoping that the number 14 pick in the 21 draft has some untapped potential remaining after receiving inconsistent minutes over his first three seasons. On the surface, this is probably an underwhelming return for Warriors fans. Still, if the franchise is stockpiling trade chips and pursue a star, its trade partners might prefer a mystery box draft pick over a third-year pro carrying career averages of only 5.9 points in 14.3 minutes. So I'm going to start with... This does feel like a very Daryl Morey trade. And what it especially reminds me of is the DeAnthony Melton deal that Morey did. And to pull up exactly what that was, that uh, back in the 2022 NBA draft, that Philadelphia 76ers president of basketball ops, Daryl Morey, announced Friday that the tr- the team has acquired DeAnthony Melton in a trade with the Memphis Grizzlies. In the trade, Philadelphia sent the draft rights to the number 23 selection, which was David Roddy and Danny Green to Memphis. But the difference here being what was great about it in this situation is the Sixers got two years of DeAnthony Melton, essentially for, of course, Danny Green being a part of it, although he was very much at the tail end of his career at that point. Essentially, just for that draft pick, that 23rd pick, they got two years of DeAnthony Melton. You only get one of Moses Moody in this situation. And to look at his salary specifically here, that it is a team option here, and then he will be a restricted free agent next offseason. So what that means to me is that would be a bit more of a risk, that you're not going to have quite the sample size. You're going to have one year to make a decision. Now, if the Sixers are watching from afar and believe that Moses Moody can be a part of their long-term core, that there is something there from the potential standpoint, because he has not received the best opportunity out there in Golden State. We know that there is Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and everything else going on there competing for minutes. That like It's not the ideal situation to evaluate this guy. It's also very tough looking guys in the Golden State system, which there's so much movement, so much off ball, just the way the guys are buzzing around and making cuts, all those things. That's a little different than, I would say, your traditional basketball or at least the version of basketball that you're going to see here in Philadelphia. So there is a world where guys like Moses Moody might look better in a different situation. Now, to dive into what we've seen from him to this point, I did want to take a look at his stats here. That three seasons, in his rookie year, he played in 52 two games started 11 and 11.7 minutes per game he averaged 4.4 points 1.5 rebound just 0.4 assists per game Overall through his career, he shot 36.2% from beyond the three-point arc, had the most volume of his career this season with three attempts per game, played in 66 games this year, started nine of them, upped his minutes to 17.5 per game, and averaged 8.1 points, 3.0 rebounds, still just .9 assists. I think it is fair to assess that even when watching him, he's not a guy that I think jumps out to me as a future playmaker. He is six foot six. He is pretty good with the ball in his hands in general, but he is a guy that it's tough to fully evaluate what he'll look like in a more traditional basketball sense. I like Moses Moses Moody. He's a guy that I'm optimistic about. I'm going to slip up like Kendrick Perkins saying it there. He is a guy that I am overly optimistic about, but I just don't think, I think they can do better for the 16th pick. And what I think is really difficult, the spot these Sixers are in, obviously we know that the draft is coming, that the countdown is less than a month at this point in time, and there is going to be, have to be a decision made about that 16th pick. But it feels like every decision the Sixers have to make is still like directly impacted by what that big piece that is coming this free agent, whether it is Paul George, whether it is Jimmy Butler, Brandon Ingram, whoever it is, all those guys dictate a drastically different supporting cast. And for example, if it is Paul George, a guy that shoots 7.9 three-point attempts per game, that is willing to let it fly, that it doesn't become as necessary of a need to bring in bombers on the perimeter, guys that are just going to get three-pointers up. 
If you bring in Jimmy Butler, it then becomes essential that I am of the belief that every player that is surrounding Joel Embiid should be at least a capable three-point shooter and at least a willing three-point shooter. That's not quite Jimmy Butler in itself, but you know the pros that come with it. So if you're going to bring in Jimmy, you have to find guys to combat that and build out a well-rounded basketball team. And to look at the team as a whole for the Sixers right now, there's not a lot. That looking at the actual roster that is under contract at this point in time, it is Joel Embiid making $51 million. It is Paul Reed on that non-guaranteed $7.7 million, which the Sixers could waive to create more cap space. It is Jeff Doughton set to make $2.1 million on the club option there. And it is Ricky Council also on a non-guaranteed $1.89 million contract. Not a lot to fully judge there. And again, every player that they need to decide whether or not they want to bring in is directly correlated by what the other supporting player is in. Now, I know that I mentioned that in thinking that, but I did have another thought process that did jump through my brain. It does feel very likely that Daryl Morey, at the minimum, is shopping the 16th pick. And frankly, I agree with the logic in this article, because it makes more sense to trade for a win now player. Same f- cut from the mindset when they brought in DeAnthony Melton. The guy that I w- want more than anything to have a part of the Sixers team as they go into battle next playoffs, it's Alex Caruso. And I do think Caruso is going to command a pretty penny that we know what a winning player he is the effort level that he can bring just the little things that he does on a basketball floor Caruso is at the level that I'd be willing to give that 16th pick and another first rounder to bring him in I think regardless of who the other players are that Caruso is going to find a way to be adequate on that roster so to look at what that would look like here the 16th pick and a 2028 first which the Sixers have two first round picks in that draft already to bring in Caruso there is the note about the stipend rule at the bottom that just means that this would have to go down on draft day this isn't something they could trade in advance because the Sixers did not make a first round pick last year now all this there's a lot still to to go down that we know the Bulls are traditionally unwilling to make player trades they have not traded a player on roster since 2021 which is straight up roster malpractice they seem dead set and committed to living in mediocrity but you know what it is what it is if the Sixers cannot get a deal Alex Caruso is more so some of the win-now player than a guy like Moses Moody. Now, if the Sixers truly believe in Moses Moody and think that is a long-term guy they can add to their core, I will hear them out on it. But what that would also mean to me is that has to come with a trade and extension pretty quickly. I don't know if I have that level of optimism there. Where the good news is here is that the tides are beginning to turn. All these rumors are popping out, all these names. It feels like there's starting to be some traction and some offseason movement. And for the Sixers specifically, there does need to be that big domino that sets everything in motion. The second that that becomes the case, that's when we're beginning to hear about like what the blueprint is for building out this roster. And by the way, I did not even mention when looking at this that there's no mention of Tyrese Maxey, who will sign this max contract this offseason. As much as I think people are going to begin to speculate into that a little bit, the bottom line is the Sixers are going to save him for last and give him as much money on the max as they can possibly offer. Going to come in around $208 million that holds him to be signing up for. But it will likely wait till the end of the offseason for salary cap reasons that they want to bring in that other big ticket guy, the other free agents that they want to bring in, and then go above the tax with Tyrese Maxey because of you know you can bring in new guys it's either to sign players back little cap loop roll loophole there but that's kind of the expectation that there seems to be no doubt that Tyrese Maxey is going to get his money he's earned every penny of it and he is the long-term part of the Sixers team so don't worry about there but not a guy that we have on the books officially just yet so right now we got more questions than answers on the Sixers team but I did want to hear what your thoughts are on Moses Moody let me know if that is a trade that you consider I think I'm pretty out on this one that Bleacher Report is speculating there I just think that the Sixers should be shooting higher and I just have a real really hard time conceptualizing what player they should be targeting until that big fish is reeled in and of course the worst case scenario is if that fish never comes if you do not pull that one on the boat whether it be Paul George Jimmy Butler Brandon Ingram there has to be a guy that the Sixers are truly looking at to raise their championship ceiling if that is not the case it does not matter if it's Moses Moody or Alex Caruso or whoever else is brought in the Sixers have to find a way to get that x-factor player to truly push them in the championship conversation so let me know what you guys think for these trades as a whole any players that have caught your eyes or other targets that you think that 16th 
pick could pull in. If it's just Moses Moody, I would much rather just make a pick and add some young talent. I understand that Moody has some young talent, but he doesn't bring the financial flexibility that is of having a young player. You're going to have to re-sign him there. So it loses a lot of the appeal in my mind. That's where my head's at. Let me know if you agree or disagree. Make sure you are dropping a like on this video, subscribing to the channel to keep the Sixers Digest family growing, and dropping any comments that you have below as well. Thank you guys for tuning in once again. Talk with you next time right here on Sixers Digest. Peace.